Now, for those of you that are watching that do have inactive entities, I'm gonna suggest that you make sure you dissolve them correctly, okay? And that's even a suggestion for those of you that are supposed to be exempt because you did uh, file or establish your entity before January 1st of 2020. Why? Because this is a new act, a new law, okay? And we all know that there may be some back and forth while they try to get things together. It's still super freshly new. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is just dissolve it just to be on the safe side. Because who's to say that you will not receive a phone call from FinCEN or communication, however they're going to communicate from FinCEN. And yes, you can just let them know, hey, I am supposed to be exempt. I have established this entity before 2020 and it's inactive. But who wants to go through that? So just make sure that you are dissolving. So not only do you need to dissolve this entity the correct way, and yes, there is a correct way. It's not just, hey, I'm not using it anymore. Um, I'm not making any money from it anymore. So out of sight, out of mind. No, there is a correct way to dissolve your entity. And it involves some very important steps, okay, which include alerting the IRS. So if you have not done that, I'm going to suggest that you do that. Now, also, I'm going to suggest that you close your bank accounts that are still attached to this entity, okay, because your EIN is still attached to it. And, and, and then also, there is some talk about FinCEN being able to cross-reference banks, okay, and we do suspect that sooner than later, banks are not going to even open business accounts that have not file this BOI report because again, this is originally to weed out criminals. So what bank wants to do business with criminals? Also make sure that you are closing out all PayPal accounts, all Venmo accounts, all Stripe accounts, all Cash App accounts, any account or even bank accounts, anything that you had to provide your business's EIN name, address to establish an account with them, I'm going to suggest that you close them because again, who's to say that all of these different parties are not going to be at some point working together to say, hey, this person had a uh, established um, entity. However, they did not file this BOI report. They still have these accounts, okay? they The business is not dissolved, right? They don't know that it's inactive. You may then now be on their radar, and it's just not necessary, especially if your business is truly inactive. So let's look at it this way. There are going to be two piles. One is going to be a pile, well, three piles. One is going to be a pile of people who are compliant. Business owners that are compliant, they do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. There's no need for them to be on the Vincent uh, flag list, okay? Then you're going to have your pile of people who had businesses. However, they are able to see that these businesses were correctly dissolved. Those are going to be also the people who are not on Finson's red flag list. And then you're going to have the list of people that did not fall in those first two lists for whatever reason. Maybe you truly are innocent and you did not know. However, Finson doesn't know that. So if you did not fall in these first two categories, you're going to be on that third category, which is definitely a red flag because the criminals are most likely not going to be in that first pile of business owners that are compliant. The criminals are most likely not going to be in that pile of people that did have businesses, but it is clearly documented that those businesses have been dissolved the correct way. However, those criminals that they are looking for may actually be in that list of people that have just not filed. They have not dissolved, right? Not saying that everybody in that list is going to be a criminal. However, their thought process is, is the criminals that we are looking for, the reason why we put this act into play are most likely gonna be somewhere in that pile. So my suggestion to all of you that are watching this, do things the correct way, okay? Think in your mind, how can I stay underneath the radar and not deal with extra stuff in 2024? Hey guys, this is Shannon Williams, your favorite tax strategist, your favorite tax pro, your favorite realtor. And I always give you guys the disclaimer that I am not 
a CPA, I am not an attorney. However, if you are watching these videos, you know that I have a lot of knowledge. So if you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, make sure you're contacting my office due to our taxes, and we will be happy to assist you with anything that you need. Even if it is not a service that we provide, we are happy to be looked at as a resource in the community. Okay, we're happy that you even thought of us. So we will do our best to refer you to someone who is ethical and professional who will get the job done for you. Our goal is to make sure that you have a great year, a tax year that you are excited about in 2024. We, we wanna help you sleep better at night with knowing that a professional is getting these things done for you. And as I always say, it's not about how much you made in the last year, it's about how much you keep, okay? We are also gonna do our very best to make sure that you get the maximum refund legally, okay? That is legally and ethically. So make sure you contact our office, D2R Taxes. We look forward to hearing from you. The number is 833-327-8291. Make it a great year, guys. Bye.